<clears throat> all right. Oh, uh, my bad, my bad. All right, what's going on, everybody? It's Mo5. Welcome back to another video. Now, today, we have to talk about a topic. We don't have to talk about it, but I prefer to talk about it, and that is the Nintendo Switch's next system. Its predecessor, Nintendo's next system, right? I feel like it's an important topic to talk about, especially since uh, 2022 is coming to a close. 2023 seems to be that year. The Nintendo Switch's lifespan ends, as in not that like they're gonna stop supporting it or whatever, not gonna make games like the Wii like had like a game come out in 2020 for it, right? So obviously that they're gonna still be making games or whatnot, but I think that we're going to see Nintendo sort of divert their attention to their next system. And I think it's very important that they do so very soon. And that's what today's video is going to be. Got some um, Splatoon 3 gameplay in the background. It's season one footage, not season two, but like, who cares? It's it's high-end gameplay, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm competing in the, the top uh, rank of, of players, the top pool of players, you know what I'm saying? This was S plus rank. And um, it, it's some good gameplay. You guys will enjoy it. But yeah, um, I'm not going to continue with the face cam. Uh, the rest of this is going to be a voiceover. So see you guys in a second. So periodically, I will bring this topic of discussion up on my channel. If you happen to have noticed, I've been doing this ever since 2019. And maybe two or three videos a year, I will discuss, you know, the Nintendo Switch Pro, the next generation of Nintendo consoles, you know, around the time that the leaks get pretty heavy or if i'm just tired of nintendo and i, I want to see some progress happen with the fidelity of their console right uh two different things sparked this video one of which was it wasn't really back and forth but uh let me just lay it out right so rgt85 made a video entitled it's time to be honest and i'm like finally bro since 2019 right almost four years i have been saying this on my channel that Nintendo, like, it's just not up to standard with what we should be seeing in terms of the fidelity of video games, right? And that's essentially what uh, RGT85 said, but he said it because I guess in the month of November was outsold by both the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, okay? And that was RGT's reason for making his video. So I'm subscribed to RGT85, right? But I'm also subscribed to Switch Force, okay? And Zach from Switch Force responded to RGT85's video, right? And it basically, I mean, I agreed with him somewhat, right? In the sense that there's no need to worry. But he was kind of combating RGT's points that, oh, no, it's because of X, Y, and Z that the Switch wasn't the number one selling console of this month or these past two months. And then he starts listing, like, God of War Ragnarok, Splatoon 3 in Japan or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, it, it really wasn't relevant, okay? And that that was what I was thinking when I was watching his video. It's like, okay, yes, we don't need to worry, obviously, but all of these points are not relevant to the topic of discussion. The only um, sort of scenario in which it would be relevant is when determining when Nintendo is going to make the changes that they need to make, right? Because let's say if the Nintendo Switch was always or is not, you know, letting the ps5 or the xbox series x you know letting wasn't the right word but let's say that they continue to outsell the xbox series x and the ps5 right for let's say the next six months obviously nintendo isn't going to feel as dire it's not going to be as dire of a situation for nintendo to make the changes that they need to make you know if let's say the PS5 and the Xbox Series X were outselling Nintendo, right? So I'm kind of glad that this happens. But then again, once you take away that sort of line of discussion, which isn't really relevant, again, that is the only scenario in which that line of, of conversing is relevant or would be relevant. You know, once we take that away, once we stop talking about that shit, uh, we're left with one solid fact, and that is that the Nintendo Switch is most definitely not performing to i think rgg said it beautifully market standard now of course i'm not denying the fact that nintendo switch probably does have the best library of first party games probably the best library of games out of the big three okay no one is denying that right and that remains 
uh, a pretty strong opinion of mine, okay? But when you look at the Nintendo Switch, there's an undeniable lack of online infrastructure, lack of processing power, lack of even controller synctivity. Like you're going to have a lot of controller delay when you're playing the games that you're playing. You know what I'm saying? So let's take, let's say, a game that is on both the Nintendo Switch and the PS4. Nine times out of ten, no, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, ten times out of ten, the PS4 version of that game is going to run better, play better, and you're just overall going to get a better experience. The crazy thing is that this is not only limited to the third party games that are on the Nintendo Switch that are also on other platforms, but also Nintendo's first party games. But just sticking with my example with the third party games really quickly, let's take Fortnite, let's take Minecraft. Uh, in the case of Fortnite, you know, play that on the PS4 and then play that on the Nintendo Switch. Huge difference. I would know because I played it on basically every play. Yeah, I have played Fortnite on every platform. Um, the disparity between PC Fortnite and PS4 Fortnite is less than Nintendo Switch Fortnite and PS4 Fortnite. It is that bad. Um, during the height of Fortnite, people were asking for the Nintendo Switch version to have mobile graphics just so that their frame rate would turn out a little bit better because even with the terrible graphics that are on the Nintendo Switch version of Fortnite that is nowhere near acceptable for, let's use the words again, market standard, you know, industry standard, sorry, not market standard, more or less the same thing. But for industry standard, I mean, it, it was already unacceptable. Either way, we're asking for even worse graphics just so that the frame rate could be a little bit better because it was, it was terrible, man. Okay, that, that's sad and also the input delay is extremely noticeable also you have games like minecraft which run fine but i mean your draw distance is horrible it's it it, it will hinder your game experience absolutely on the nintendo switch and it's crazy how nobody else no other console has has these problems uh but the nintendo switch does and of course they have reasons i keep saying it again and again you know with the money that the wii u generated nintendo of course they're gonna make um of a, a, a console their next console is going to be just, is only as strong as the nintendo switch right it's understandable but when you have opportunities to do better when the nintendo switch is consistently the number one selling console for years until october and november of 2022 right when that's the case and you still don't do anything about it i mean my entire oled video was how disappointed i was in nintendo for only making the oled for making minimal upgrades to the nintendo switch as opposed to taking the opportunity and making a nintendo switch pro which is to be honest quite long overdue okay and honestly kind of how rgt said in his video you know if you do think otherwise or a you should want uh this opinion to stand because why why should we accept this from nintendo it's 2022 and nintendo is nowhere near the nintendo switch rather is nowhere near where it is supposed to be in terms of industry standards right like the art style of most of the first party games that come out on the nintendo switch is the art style that it is because of the limitations of Nintendo's hardware and here I'm not the only one saying this I will show you a hearty review of Breath of the Wild where this point was also brought up. The visual style Nintendo went with fits the direction of the game and is very pleasant to look at but it was also clearly chosen to reduce performance strains on the hardware. Link's character model, the most important one in the game, is made from about 12,000 triangles. Whereas Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn, another open world game released in the same year, has hair made from a hundred thousand and triangles. Whether the base of 30 frames per second is acceptable or not will have to be judged on an individual level. I'm personally not bothered by it. But in areas with a lot of meshes, effects, or ragdoll physics on the screen at one time, it can dip well below this. Extremely unfortunate to see in a flagship title. None of this is enough to spoil the game, and the same can be said for the poorly disguised asset swapping in the otherwise seamless world loading or some fairly jarring pop-in, but it is certainly enough to make you wish that Breath of the Wild was running on more powerful hardware. Now, I didn't agree with everything he said in that four-hour Breath of the Wild retrospective, but that critique in particular hits home 
every single time I hear it. Now, instead of hearing me ramble off giving you examples of first party Nintendo Switch games not running at what they should be in the year 2022, even in the year 2017, the year that the Nintendo Switch first came out, I'm going to play a couple of clips for you just so you can hear other people talk about how poor the Nintendo Switch games are running and how it really is below industry standard. Here it is. And Hyrule Warriors on Switch, it dropped into single digits. Like, I love the Switch, but it's not performing to the standard that we should be at at this point. Bayonetta 3 ambitiously targets 60 FPS, but falls short with many detours to 45 FPS and below. The Switch port of Sonic Frontiers is drastically scaled back, running at or slightly below 30 FPS and suffering major object pop in besides, which outlets like Digital Foundry made very clear in their tech review. Now in docked mode, at least the target is 30 FPS and the resolution I understand that in this example, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the fault is not, or less so of the Nintendo Switch and more so on Game Freak. However, the target is 30 FPS in docked mode. I don't know if I'm crazy, but I don't think we would have seen half the issues with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's performance if the Switch were a little more powerful. That's that's all I'm saying. Docked mode 30 FPS target. That's crazy. But for now, this first point I have here is the frame rates. Yeah, they're not great. The standard for games is now becoming 60 frames per second, and the Switch, in many cases, can't retain a constant 30 frames. If it was just some third-party games that had some frame drops, then I could honestly understand this to a degree, but the fact is, majority of big Nintendo game releases have noticeable frame drops while playing. I don't want to exaggerate, so we'll say around 20 seconds from when we could see the screen, to when the countdown finished. That was how laggy it was. Yet yeah, these improvements are small comfort to Switch fans hoping for ports of Elden Ring or Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. These games, along with many others released on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, are unlikely to ever see a Switch release. The gap between the Switch's capabilities and that of its competitors is too wide for most developers to bridge. Now you can say, oh, it's just these games in particular. It's the developer's fault or that they're very, very weird scenarios surrounding the reasons as to why these games have poor frame rates. And it, it actually, in most cases, run fine. I mean, okay, maybe I would agree with you, but I mean, the fact of the matter is that we are not where we need to be with the Nintendo Switch. And that that's a fact. I'm not trying to convince anybody of that. That is, like, it's so apparent. It, 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 it's more or less a fact at this point. Here's the last example that I will give you. It's like, where are our third party games, our major third party games? Obviously we have The Witcher 3, we have Skyrim. Those are older games, you know, and they're not as intense as some of the other games like GTA 5, Red Dead Redemption, Assassin's Creed, Valhalla, Origins, Odyssey. You know, where are those games? because those same developers port their older games onto the Nintendo Switch, but the newer games that they're coming out with aren't on the Switch. What, do, do you think that these companies have a vendetta against Nintendo? I mean, I mean, with the Wii U, sure, but we, we aren't in the Wii U era anymore. The Nintendo Switch has been the number one selling console for years. Obviously, developers are going to want to have to put their games on the system you know and they can't i mean literally the president of microsoft said that they want call of duty on the nintendo switch and we'll get into that in just a second actually but where, where is call of duty on the switch where, where is it oh yeah they, they can't put it on the switch they literally can't so we're missing out on a lot of major third party titles and it's not really the fault of the nintendo switch's limitations that's not to blame but it is nintendo who has to take accountability for their lack of doing anything about it and that brings me into the topic of this video when will nintendo address these issues with a new not even a new switch just a new console when we'll be seeing a new console and 
what will that new console entail and just before we get into it i obviously do not hate nintendo the nintendo switch i've poured thousands of hours in multiple games on the nintendo switch okay so that, that that's just an asinine position uh but that being out the way with that being out the way let's get into the nintendo switch's predecessor so now if you guys didn't know <clears throat> some pretty big news occurred uh not too long ago microsoft who has now acquired activision activision who owns call of duty microsoft said that they have <laughs> a 10 year deal a 10 year deal with nintendo to where they will be committed to put call of duty games on nintendo platforms he did not say this was phil spencer that said it he did not say the nintendo switch because that's obviously not possible <laughs> but nintendo consoles okay nintendo why say that now i really do think that a new console is eminent because you know with everything that i stated prior to this point of the video you kind of feel the energy of the gaming community kind of shift or the nintendo community at least i think you know we're seeing some pushback from nintendo i think it's about that time that nintendo at least addresses the limitations it's 2022 going on 23 it's about that time that nintendo finally addresses new hardware okay so i mean with, with this announcement also it's perfect timing i do think that we are going to hear about something next year and see something the year after thankfully now what will this new console entail and what should it entail so not only are we missing out on major third party titles and obviously we do have a lot of third party titles but i mean like the big demanding ones that you would aspire to have on your nintendo switch that come out today not only are we missing out on those but we are also being handed a subpar gaming experience for today's day and age, honestly. Well, let me redirect your attention to what Shigeru Miyamoto has said in a recent, I think it was a quarterly meeting? Uh, it wasn't an interview, but here's what he had to say. Nintendo has finally broken its silence on its next-gen system during a recent financial QA session when asked about backward compatibility and next-gen hardware. Nintendo's Shigeru Miyamoto said, Nintendo's strength is in creating new video game experiences, so when we release new hardware in the future, we would like to showcase unique video games that could not be created with pre-existing hardware. Just to provide a little bit more context, he did address backwards compatibility and how back in the day it was harder to make certain things backwards compatible than it is nowadays or in terms of uh having the publishing rights and transferring over from one console to another basically answering the question while not really answering the question will your next system have backwards compatibility right but i obviously think that it is a must for the next system to have backwards compatibility and i think digitally also i think that we should have the nintendo switch's library be present on this next generation of system i actually think that this should be what the wii u was to the wii but obviously executed much better because for that same reason the wii u failed right so how do we avoid this well do not let shigeru miyamoto's comments sort of obfuscate the fact that the hybrid model works he says that oh we want to make games that can't be realized with the current nintendo switch essentially don't let that fool you they're probably i was gonna say most definitely but obviously i have no way of knowing but probably they're going to be sticking with the hybrid model uh and thus making the nintendo switch backwards compatible with this new hybrid console right wouldn't it be cool if we can see the screen while it's in docked? That would be sick. And then you have the option to turn it off. I think I think they're going to do a design choice like that. But we'll leave it to Nintendo, right? Obviously, they're referring to a gimmick. But I'm not going to try and sit and discuss gimmicks. And which gimmick would be best for the new console. Which would be most appealing to the masses. Honestly, let's go ahead and knock the obvious out of the way because nintendo's library of games is unbeatable the most important thing is getting the 
third party support making sure that you have every single piece of third party game that the other consoles have right and because you know the switch has sold over 100 million i feel like the people who don't have a switch probably aren't gonna have a switch right they don't have a switch for a reason and because the nintendo switch's biggest flaw is its hardware i think we need something respectable <laughs> okay something needs to be respectable about the numbers okay now i don't think it should be as strong as the ps5 at all okay that's not necessary i'm thinking more so xbox series s with the 1440p and up to 120 frames per second now 1440p is important because the switch goes up to 1080p right and so obviously you want your next line of hardware your next generation of hardware to increase okay now whether they're going to have an oled screen or not uh i don't know but i don't really think it's important i actually do think that they're going to keep the oled screen actually but that's going to be very costly um but more so with the frame rate because the frame rates whew, the, this next system has to be at least 90 frames per second or in the triple digits up to the triple digits and that has to be something that is marketed because everybody in the gaming community knows that the nintendo switch its biggest flaw is not within its graphics the graphics are fine but the processing power and the frame rates okay so if you can market a respectable frame rate right then i think that this new console will be marketable now the next important thing is actually not the games because if activision or not really activision i'll say call of duty if call of duty can go from laughing at the prospect of having black ops 4 and other call of duty games appear on the nintendo switch to having a 10 year deal a 10 year deal that's a tongue twister my bad for having call of duty on nintendo i mean jeez bro and do you know what else there is going to be no call of duty 2023 so yes call, <laughs> nintendo 2024 we're, we're going to be seeing something we're going to be seeing something hearing about something dude i'm excited okay now differentiation from the switch into this new hybrid console okay we obviously know that it's going to be a hybrid it, it has to be a hybrid i think that the tablet if there is going to be a tablet piece it pulls out of the dock horizontally instead of vertically okay put some leds on the console and on the controller so that people will know hey this is different just on a visual aspect you know the wii u it kind of looked like an accessory to the wii okay and the marketing was terrible which kind of led to its failure we do not want the same thing to happen to this new console now to be honest i do think that they're going to scrap the joy cons i think that the joy cons was a switch thing and i think it needs to remain a switch thing let's not forget that nintendo got sued <laughs> for joy cons manic drift okay and they clearly do not have the capacity to address or fix the drift within the joy cons uh personally my joy con drifts like a motherfucker i mean it, it, it my bad it doesn't no it does drift it does drift and the bumper is broken i only use my pro controllers um yeah and so do literally thousands probably millions of other joy cons they drift so i think that that is going to be a thing of the past i think another selling point could be customize your own controller they're going to develop a new not joy con but a new kind of controller and it's going to be customizable sort of what you see in this concept right here where they're putting like new button layouts on the controller like a sort of magnetized i think they could do that and i think that can be a really great selling point but the main takeaways is a backwards compatibility with the nintendo switch b a hybrid model c a differentiation between the switch and this new console and d of course specs that you can use as a selling point because you did mess up with the nintendo switch with their lack of decent specs and processing power and fidelity and capacity being the switch's biggest flaw and that is more or less apparent within the gaming community so you do need to boast respectable spec numbers 
and that is something that is going to have to be marketed so something that will hold up over the years also it doesn't have to be ps5 level i don't think it will be honestly like 4k also don't try to compete with the steam deck that thing can run 8k with 60 hertz there's no point in trying to compete with the steam deck so i'm saying 1440p up to at least 90 frames per second possibly 120 and also maybe just create hardware that can be digitally upgraded firmware updates that actually are meaningful because nintendo is already behind with the nintendo switch and so their next console is going to be behind nintendo is just really behind and at this point it's going to take an insane amount of money and resources to try to compete with uh the power the processing power of what the competitors their competitors have to offer um especially with the timing because the wii u was under power compared to the xbox 360 and the ps4 and sorry i meant xbox one and then of course you have the switch which is you know a little bit more powerful than the wii u but then here comes the ps5 here comes the series x right so the same thing is going to happen to this console right then we have an upgrade but then in the middle of that upgrades lifespan then you have uh, PlayStation 6, uh, Xbox Series, whatever the fuck, you know, their new Xbox, the the Steam box, <laughs> okay? Um, but anyways, guys, that is the video. Hopefully, this is going to come into fruition. Um, I think that a lot of things are lining up to where we're going to be able to see some new hardware pretty soon. And hopefully, Nintendo knocks it out of the park in a meaningful way and so that we can as a player base as a nintendo player base get back on track and enjoy the amazing games nintendo puts out of course at industry standard and maybe even above industry standard depending upon what that next console's gimmick will be anyways guys i love you all and i'll catch you guys on the next video none <laughs> well why do why do people take heroin in the first place? Whether it's illegal or illegal, why would they take it in they the wanna, first place? They want to they feel good. High to oh, they want to feel good and get high, situation. right? But like the only people that like take heroin are like white people. <laughs> not sure. So, That's so not sure. There's so many black heroin users. It's crazy.